So thanks, Robert, for being here and being willing to talk about uh, this most recent experience that you've had um, with death. And I know it's not necessarily your first, but perhaps most profound. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, I'd I'd love to hear more about um, the experience and and the aftermath of it. Well, what happened, I was having an unusual month. I had a a break in work and I was working on a a book about how I do my work. Um, I got my diet was super clean, uh, even cleaner than had been. Mm. No sugar, no salt, just and I, I was getting very fit. Yeah. And um, the morning of June 22nd, I had a stress test just for my heart at the local hospital. And, and it turned out, well, there was, it was fine. I had some pain. Half an hour after the stress test, I, um, I felt more, some pain come back, maybe a two out of 10. Two is minor, 10 out of 10 is unbearable pain. And I was going to go back to the emergency room to just have them check on me again. I had that intuition. And then within a second or two, my pain level jumped from a 2 out of 10 to a 10. I was in absolute agony. My, uh, the pain in my rib cage, I felt like there was, a, there was this huge piece of steel in my, in my side of my chest here that wanted to break out mm. in my arm. I was in agony. I knew I was dying. And Diane was with me outside. We were, and she was, of course, freaked out seeing this. Here I am, healthy. Suddenly, I'm in complete agony. Um, and I know I'm going to die. I could tell. Were this you is, saying that? Were you like... No, I, I, I couldn't speak hard, but I mm. knew I was going to die, and I was on the verge of blacking out because the pain was so intense. Mm. And um, yeah. the pain was so intense that I, um, I couldn't speak. I started to weep, and I, the agony, I, was, I could barely stand. I was leaning against my back in one of my car, and I was um, on my way out. And I saw Dan 10 feet away. She grabbed her cell phone. She was going to call 911. And I was, I thought... What a way to go. I, it's the only thought I had. I don't want to go like this, but I was. It wasn't like I could breathe a certain way, do something that would shift it. I was going. Mm-hmm. And I knew I had a couple, maybe a certain number of minutes left, and I'd probably black out, and that would that'd be it. Mm-hmm. She called 911, and then I'm, I'm in agony, and she's really upset. And then the ambulance came within five minutes. Wow. A miracle. A miracle. They got me in there and said, we have to make sure you're having a heart attack. <laughs> and I, they found that out really fast. And I'm laying there in agony. Um, they're, they're, they're trying to cut the pain. They gave me morphine. Nothing altered the pain. So I realized I was going to stay in this agonizing, unbearable pain. And all I said to them after a few minutes was, am I going to die before I reach the hospital? And they said, you'll be, you'll, you're going to be alive when we get there. So I was... I was okay. I, the pain was there, um, and they were working on me. And Diane's in the front, and I can feel for her. Um, and before I knew it, we were at the hospital. And an hour after the heart attack, there I am with a stent put in here, mm-hmm. my left um, coronary artery, and I can breathe. I couldn't breathe until then on the left side of my body. It's like a giant steel boot was pressing me down. Mm-hmm. I felt like this. I want to have this arm cut off. It hurts so much. Mm-hmm. And suddenly, there's no pain, and I'm in bliss extreme bliss every breath is blissful and um i'm just things hurt like the the groin the thing that ran up my groin to get into my heart there's procedures being done on me i don't care mm. i don't give a shit how much it hurts that stuff i'm alive and i see diane she works she's really happy i'm alive she's shaking it was very traumatic for her yeah and then i spent two days in the hospital um my heart was quite damaged and um I came out of it and um, I said, I feel so different. I did a couple of days of trauma work on myself with Diane's help, where I released all the trauma of what happened, a lot of crying and shaking. Then I was just free. And I, but I couldn't walk up steps very well. I was out of breath, and I'd been very athletic before that. But I, took, I went to cardiac rehab and started to um, rebuild myself very slowly with some skilled help. And... Um, Three weeks later, I had my I had a group I had planned a training, and I I decided to go ahead with it. And I had no idea if I could do it. I walked in, and I felt so happy to see the people. I felt so affectionate. And I said, I told them what had happened. They'd heard. They were they were moved. And um, I said, I won't be doing any body work because it might be too hard on me. An hour later, I was doing body work, <laughs> and it worked. And I came out of it, and I felt happy. I did the whole week, and I did not feel tired from it, strained. And I felt like I'd been rewired internally. 
Mm-hmm. I felt very soft. I, I felt soft before, but I felt very soft inside. Um, no less masculine, but I felt very, very unusually tender and incredibly grateful. I'm still here. And that emanated from me through the whole thing. I'm actually, this is bonus time. I get to be here. I get to be with Diane. I get to work. I could write another book. And I could have been gone. I mean, the doctor said another five minutes probably. They, that was the big one they called it, Widowmaker. You would have been done. You were cooked. Late ambulance, I probably would have been dead. So I barely, I, I just made it. And I could have been out hiking. I could have, Diane could have been out shopping. Mm-hmm. Some, many things could have happened. I would have been, I wouldn't be here now. So the fact that I'm here now feels more profound to me than when I was younger and I had times where I came close to death. This time, I felt so intimate with that profoundest of moments. There's birth, door swings one way. Here's death, swings the other way. And I um, have more time. And I feel way more easy about dying. I did before because I've worked on it a lot, but yeah. this is different. I'm, I'm far more aware of it now and of deeper dimensions. So, and I wrote years ago one of my books Life is a near-death experience. That's how it seemed to me when I had nearly died many years ago. I, I felt it again even more. Life is a near-death experience. Death is always right here. With you, me, Jason, we're all, we're so close to it, and we act like we have time, and we don't really have time. There's enough right. time. I have enough time left to learn how to open to it more, to bow to it, and to hopefully go to my death, clear mind, open heart, soft belly, hmm. without any preconceived notion of what it's going to be, what happens after, if anything happens after. It's more like, here's the mystery, I open to it. And my time in the hospital did that. And what I did, I wrote about it two days after I, um, the heart attack, three days after. And I just sent a copy to the doctor, a cardiologist who I really liked who was with me. Hmm. Unbeknownst to me, he circulated it through the entire hospital. Oh, wow. And the staff, they all were reading it because uh, I'm... I'm a skilled writer, so they were, you're reading, here's this report. It starts off with, I'm in the ambulance. I didn't try and write it as a story, but I, here's how it poured out of me. And it made a difference to many people. So I ended up writing a fair bit about my heart attack and this aftermath, about the soft and the opening, the recognition that avoiding death kills us. Avoiding death deadens us. Yeah. So I'm much closer to death, and I'm grateful for it. It was one hell of a hard way to be launched into it but i get to be here yeah yeah we are so glad you are and you had said i i read something you wrote recently just about kind of feeling that every day and that intimacy and it's the closeness yeah you know and really holding that when i meditate on my own death and mortality i always feel more alive Mm. Not jumping up and down a lot, but I feel more alive, more vital, more plugged into the uh, deeper levels of me and what transcends me. There's a sense of intimacy with it more. Yeah. And death actually makes that possible. Death increases my sense of beauty. It just increases. And Diana, of course, and I are very grateful we have more time. It's not a lot of time, yeah. but still, there's more time. It's more precious. It's like, it's oh more my precious. Gosh. And before when I had near death experiences, um, it made life more precious, but I was I was younger, hadn't worked through certain things. It, it, it didn't stick with me the same way. This one stuck with me, and I ha- it hasn't left me. Every day I'm grateful in a way I wasn't before. You know, I, I get to walk, I get to see, and things that normally might have bothered me, um, it's hard for them to get to me now. Yeah. Mm. Thank you so much for just being willing to share that i can't believe just sitting here with you that that was just what three months ago yeah. you know yeah and i just had an echocardiogram two days ago three days ago i got the results and, okay. and it just says my heart's normal again wow so it's rebuilt wow and better than before <laughs> it sounds like yeah in so many ways yeah, yeah. and I'm, but I'm prepared i always have to carry nitroglycerin with me just in case okay, so yeah. wherever i go I've got some nitroglycerin handy, yeah. and I am going to Australia for October. It's like, okay, I can go. I'll be fine. I can tell. Mm. Before, I wouldn't have dared do that. Yeah. Mm. But it's a good reminder. I mean, when I was much younger, I, I, I you know, read Castaneda when he came out and all that, and came death over the left shoulder and early Buddhist studies. 
It all made sense, but I didn't really live it that much. It sounded great. But that's for older people to consider and contemplate. I'm sure. young and I'm going to live forever. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and you really just don't know until you actually experience it. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, there's moments where I can feel it close. You Have know? you been close? No, I haven't. But, but sometimes, actually just, I think last night or two nights ago, I just all of a sudden, um, you know, something going on with my breathing and it's like, this could be it. Yeah. So I have moments of that, but it's not like That's that. The, there's a deeper you know? sense too when I'm, when I'm, I'm aware of my breathing that when I exhale, there's no guarantee. It seems, of course, there'll be another breath. There's no guarantee. And I felt right. that in the hospital. There's no guarantee. Oh, it feels so good to exhale and just open. And then, oh my God, another breath comes out of the blue. I don't do it. And here it is. And how easy it is to take that for granted. Yeah. So you have a mini experience at night where you, oh my God, what if I couldn't breathe? What if I was underwater or something? Yeah. 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 It's just really always right there. And yeah. That, that can awaken a relationship to its depth very quickly. If you're reminded this person I'm right pissed off at right now, they could, if they were gone, I'd be devastated. And what a way if they, what if they died while I'm pissed at them and they haven't resolved it? Yeah. So something really to hold as much as we can, moment to moment, breath by breath. Yeah. Life, life is a near death experience. Life is it actually a, is. Death is that close by. Life is a near death experience. Yeah. Not not maybe not with the psychedelic visuals all the time, but still <laughs> still there. Yeah. Yeah. And how great it is to to feel you're still here. We're still here. I'm still here. Yeah. What grace. What grace. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank Welcome. you again.